Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start off with a little bit of hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo, yeah. All right, let's go. Gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, gentlemen and ladies, say so treat it like a lady, ladies and gents. It's time to do one of those videos. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a little bit of energy this afternoon. Why? Because we going to talk about contracts. Contracts? Yes, we going to talk about contracts. Hey, mama, he about to talk about contracts. Will you turn that music down so we can hear what he got to say? Hey, hey, mama, I'm going to talk about contracts, but I'm playing the music. I play the music as loud as I want to. You put your hearing aids in if you want to hear better. I don't care if you're able to pick up the sounds of a dog whistle with them on. You put them in. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. She, 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 she getting on my nerves, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to talk about. But we ain't going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about a little bit right now. Gotta tell you, I'm doing some paperwork for the DMV because DMV has been trying to give me a hard time, y'all. They've been trying not to process my paperwork. I'm sending it to them. They are sending it to the wrong address on purpose. And then when it gets returned to them because they sent it to the wrong address, they're still not sending it to me. Now, what the, is wrong with them? So I'm about to give them attention. Now, hold on. Hey, 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 temps. Y'all patience. Y'all hold on a second a minute. Temptations, treat her like a lady, y'all. Now let's talk for a minute. We're gonna talk for a minute, y'all, because we got a minute. Y'all got a minute, I got a minute. We're gonna talk for a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, let me explain something. You ever apply for a job at a restaurant or the supermarket or the building in an office? You ever applied for an apartment bill to have an apartment? You ever applied for a driver's license? Or have you ever applied for a fee waiver? Have you ever applied for assistance from the government under any circumstances? Have you ever applied, pay attention, for a tax return? Well, please understand, whenever you're doing an application, remember, they call it an application. It is not like you're applying some WD-40. It is not like you're applying two components of J.B. Weld. It is not that type of application, people. You don't realize what you're doing, so I'm about to help you educate and understand yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody and your grandmama need to know this. Okay, so if you need to send them over to this crazy fool, you send them over to this crazy woman, you better get back up in that room and leave me alone. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, she be imitating my voice and everything. I no, I had to go outside for a second and talk. To, I'm I'm back. I apologize. It's, I I tried. I was supposed to put it on pause. That's my fault. And if she comes in here and takes it off pause, when I put it on pause one day, I promise you, she gonna go through that hole in that key slot in my door. I guarantee you, she gonna fit. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me explain to you what all of you should have known. The laws you did not know exist said this. They really did say this. Now, when I first saw the laws you didn't know exist, I, when I first saw that list, I didn't get everything fully. It took almost 10 years, people. Technically, it took six years. Well, on, if you want to get real, it took four years. I realized it in 2015. Okay. And I received that list of laws you did not know exist in 2011. So it took me four years of going through the document on and off for that period of time and referring to it to realize what they were saying under the jurisdictional section. They talked about a nexus. In order for there to be, pay attention, in order for there to be jurisdiction for the court, there must be a jurisdictional nexus. Remember how I told you that the police purposely didn't pull me over in 2018? What, no, it was 2019, sorry. When they said they saw me driving without a license? Well, if you saw me driving without a license, why didn't you pull me over? Why didn't you check my ID? 
Well, the reason why they didn't pull me over is because I didn't have a contract with them. I didn't have a application on file with them. Now, wait, hold on. What you mean you didn't have a contract? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and explain it to you this way. We're going to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, a written application is generally subject to the same rules of construction as an ordinary contract. But it says for insurance. That's because this was an insurance case. But you need to understand a written application is a contract. You are agreeing to do certain things. You are agreeing to come work for that agency. You are agreeing to get services from that agency. You are agreeing to have fees waived. That's why you normally, their contracts have under penalty of perjury. So how do you get around that, ladies and gentlemen? Technically, there isn't a way to get around it. Many of you have been doing reservation of rights. Ladies and gentlemen, reservation of rights is not enough because you can reserve your rights because the contract, you're not, a, you're not saying anything in the contract where they're violating your rights. Okay, so reservation of rights is not enough, people. Okay? But I just want you to understand, even if you have an insurance policy, that's a contract. You apply to the court, you file something with the court, they're claiming you're creating a contract. Ladies and gentlemen, when you fill out that cover sheet, this is what you should be doing. Hold on, let's see if we can find another one of these things that ain't talking just about insurance. Let's see, what is this? Once confected, confected? Man, he was confected. The contract of insurance has the effect of law between parties as to the areas with which it deals. It is subject to the same rules of interpretation as generally applicable in written agreements. It's a contract. Now, all of these deal with insurance, and I wasn't literally trying to deal with insurance. I'm just dealing with application. But of course, the courts want to. Now, remember, you got to remember that word generally. Man, generally, always popping his head up. That means it applies to just about everything. Okay? So these are all insurances, every single one of them. And Let's do, let's get rid of application, written application. And let's do N. And so that's how we're going to get, that's how I got started with it in the first place. A contract for insurance is generally subject to the same rules as other contracts. A contract for insurance is generally subject to the same rules as other contracts. As such, it is subject to the same rules of construction as other contracts. What is it here? A perpetual agreement is a contract. Setting forth requirements party must meet to create a valid and enforceable perpetual agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, in remarriage. A marriage is a contract, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for those of you who didn't understand. That's why there are requirements by my God when you enter into such an agreement because it's a three-fold agreement. Three parties are involved in that agreement. I know you didn't understand that at first, but you need to understand that now. You ignorant mother, I'm sorry, apologize. A separation agreement between husband and wife is a contract between the parties. Its interpretations is generally a matter of law, and it is subject to the same rules of construction as governing other contracts. The same as all applications, ladies and gentlemen. An application, is subject to the same rules as contract law. It falls under contract law. Let's see. Generally, man, generally is always showing. Do you see how generally just keeps stepping up into the mix? Thought he was dead. No, generally is always there. Generally, a contract for insurance is subject to the same rules of construction. Now, you notice it says, like, pay attention. Some of you guys may not have caught that. It is real slight that the court is saying this. Generally, a contract of insurance. A contract of insurance? Wait a minute. A contract of insurance. See, contract of insurance, contract of insurance. A bunch of cases saying a contract of insurance. So do me a favor, y'all. A contract of insurance. Do me a favor. Let's, let's take a trip back. 
back in the time. We're going to go way back, back in the time. And now we're going to go way up because, see, we're going to start from the bottom. And now guess what we're going to do? We're going to make it to the top. A written application for insurance is generally subject to the same rules of construction as an ordinary contract. So let's you get it. An application or a contract for insurance is a contract subjected to the general rules of contract. It's an agreement between the parties. And if your employer accepts your application, you have an agreement. Why do you think you can sue him for unlawful termination? Because you have an agreement, people. Now, when you work for an employer, you don't realize that you are a subcontractor. An application is a subcontract for that corporation. You are a <clears throat> subcontractor. I know it's starting to make a little bit of sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you get around those government contracts that are trying to will you in. This is a simple bill of sale. I have to complete this because the DMV claims they lost my stuff. Pay attention, y'all. Amended format as permitted in law. You are allowed to conditionally accept the terms of any contract. You are allowed to change the terms of any contract. You are allowed to amend any formal document issued to you by the courts or anyone else. Just don't go off the rockers. Don't go and be stupid. And if somebody challenges you, if you're going to tell me that this is not a contract, so you're going to tell me that I don't get to put in my terms and conditions in the contract? See, the thing is, every place this thing says application, I'm going to change it to petition. Since the DMV claims to represent the state government, then I'm going to petition government. I am not going to contract with government. I'm going to exercise a constitutional right. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't done this before. Y'all need to understand, I was working on this today. Been working on it and on and off, and this is my mission for today and tomorrow. Okay? Get this done. This is this is the only thing I'm working on. I'm not working on any other paperwork or nothing. I, oh, I did that other paperwork this morning, but that, you know, that was this morning. I have a meeting tonight with the new organization that we're starting. And we will keep you guys apprised as to when they will actually be started. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do one final thing. Many of you are contacting me by my personal emails regarding company business. You need to stop that. This is not a SATCOM YouTube channel. This is not an SAA YouTube channel. This is not a PTOPP YouTube channel. This is Eon's house. Go ahead and take a look underneath. This is my house. So stop bringing another into my house, okay? Wipe your feet when you come into my house, mother. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let you go. But just understand, I certify under the penalty of the Constitution for the state of California that the foregoing is true and accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot do true and correct because every human makes a mistake. You can never do true and correct. You can do true and accurate. There is no law that requires you to sign under penalty of perjury unless you're one of them United States citizens, okay? But there is no law requiring penalty of perjury. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have to go and have a Coke and a smile because I done had all the smiles I could take. Now it's time for me to go get some Coke. So I'm going to see y'all later. Y'all take care, all right? All right, I'm out of here. Hey, what you want to treat her like? That's my boys right there, Temptations. <laughs> gotta go, y'all. Gotta, gotta, gotta what? Treat her like a lady! Gotta go! Y'all take care. When you were what? Your mama what? See, you had to say his mama? Gotta go, y'all.